uh, once again. Um, no, just start fresh. I want them to know about the air conditioner that came on. All right, so this is the. Uh, it was good, right? When I hit the, I turned up the resonance, and the air conditioner came on, and it. Whoosh, we thought, oh my God, it's, it's all gone wrong, but it's not gone wrong at all. It's gone right. This is the Roland Juno Six, um, and this is the loveliest um, Juno I've ever come across. This particular one. Uh, with the beautiful walnut uh, sides and the walnut front. Gorgeous, look at this thing. Um, and it sounds wonderful. So yeah, um, all, the, all the bits and pieces work um, as they're supposed to. Um, Switches, right? Yeah. Chick, 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 chick. Um, yeah, it's got a bit of a noisy chorus here. You can probably, I mean, the, the, the Juno is famous for its noisy chorus chip, but in this case, um, it's a little noisier than it's supposed to be. Uh, the, that's what happens with these, apparently. The, the MN3009 chips. Uh, wear down over over the years so I've got a replacement chips a pair of chips uh, for this um, to fix the noise issue but I'm not a tech person so I do not dare open it up um, but uh, yeah because that's a little louder than it's supposed to be but uh, it's apparently very common with the Junos it's just what they do over time but um, there was another there was another issue with this one uh, when I first got it the guy who sold it to me pointed out that the the pitch bend when you when you moved to the left when you pitched down uh, was a bit glitchy, but I spoke to the guys at Soundgas in in the UK. Um, they are who he bought it from, and they said to me, "Just keep keep messing with it. it. Might just be a dirty contact or something like that." And I think that's the case because it's no longer glitchy, as far as I can tell. Uh, it used to be that if you went all the way. And held it, it went, oh, but it doesn't do that anymore because uh, I've just been playing it every day because obviously I don't want to actually sell this thing. Something like that. Um, but yeah, it, it, uh, so that, that problem is no longer a problem. Maybe if you go all the way to the extreme. Even then, I think it's all cleaned up now. It works just fine, so I'm very, very happy about that. Um, anyway, yeah. Um, so this, this is in just beautiful condition. Everything about it is wonderful. It's a gorgeous synthesizer. I truly love this thing. Um, why am I selling it? I'm not certain, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I have other synths. And I think I, I relate to some of my other synths more personally. You know, say the Prophet 5, that's been my, my synth for, for my entire life. And more recently, um, the Korg Prologue is one that just has a sound that, that I can relate to somehow. Um, I love the Juno sound. Um, it's beautiful, but it to me is a little bit more of the people's sound. You know, it's the sound of an era. It's a very familiar sound. Um, you play this thing and you are kind of playing the music of the Juno. Um, not, that, not, that, not that anybody couldn't make it personal, but it's just for me, I don't, I don't uh, relate to it so much as I do other, some of the other synths that I have, but it is wonderful. Um, this is my second one. I mean, I do, I do like them enough to <laughs> um, keep buying them back apparently. <laughs>
And I hope the live mic is, is picking up the, again, the analog clunkiness of the keys. Gotta have that. I mean, that's real. That's the real thing. This is the real thing, and it's beautiful. This is a truly uh, an, an exquisite uh, uh, example of a Juno. I mean, these are 40 plus years old, so to find one in, in condition like this is pretty astonishing. Um, yep. And I don't know what else to say. Um, so uh, if, if this was a tutorial, we'd say, I'm just gonna play you out, and I would play for 15 minutes some really terrible jazzy thing with a slight Indian inflection so I can, so I can show this off again. But I won't do that. <laughs>